Hello everyone, this is Jeremy. So today we're going to be talking about the EXP3 algorithm uh, and we're going to go through a proof of an upper bound on the weak regret of this algorithm with respect to the best action. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should check out the link below the video. Uh, it'll take you to my blog where I explain what the heck we're doing and give some computer programs that uh, illustrate some nice features of the algorithm. So cool, let's just get into it. Uh, so let me remind you uh, what the EXP3 algorithm does. So here this is EXP three. So it takes as input uh, two things. So the first thing is uh, the number k of actions. So k uh, is a number, an integer, uh, which represents the number of actions. Uh, and then there's a parameter gamma, uh, which is uh, between 0 and 1, so not including 0. And this is the egalitarianism factor that we uh, talked about uh, in the post, this is going to uh, measure how much you're going to lean towards just exploring and having a uniform probability distribution over the actions. Uh, so uh, once we have these inputs, we're going to start by initializing uh, these w uh, these weights. So here, this w i uh, of one is going to be set to one for each i going from one to k. Uh, and so these w i is going to be a weight that we have maintained for each one of the k actions. Uh, and it's going to represent our confidence that this thing, is, this action is good to take. Uh, so the notation we'll use is actually w i of t. And so this is in the first round, it's going to be set to 1. And then later in t rounds, it's going to be changing to some other values. So we'll see that in a second. Uh, so now we're going to enter this loop. So we're going to say for t going from 1 to whatever till till we decide to stop uh, we're going to set uh, these probabilities so so given these weights we want to draw from a probability distribution proportional to the weights so that's what these pi's are going to be so pi of t is going to be uh, so for each i we're going to set it to 1 minus gamma times the current weight of that action divided by the sum of all of the uh, weights of all of the actions. So this is j going from 1 to k. Okay, fine. So, uh, And then we're going to add to this uh, gamma over k. So this is where the egalitarianism factor comes in. Uh, so if gamma is very close to 1, then we're going to uh, be pretty much exploring all the time, and the weights are not going to to mean anything. And if the gamma is close to 0, then the weights are going to uh, count for the majority of our choices. Um, so uh, that's fine. So let's move on. So now, once we've set these probabilities, we want to actually draw uh, an action. Uh, an action. Uh, so I'll call it i sub t according to the pi. Fine. Uh, and then this action is going to have some associated rewards. So remember that the, I called x the reward vectors. So we're going to have x sub i sub t of t. So this is observe the reward given by x sub i sub t, and we're going to use this uh, to update our weights. So uh, this is the reward, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and we're going to uh, modify it a little bit. So we'll see why in a second. So we're going to set this x j hat of t. So uh, this is going to be for all j. So for all j. We're going to do this. We're going to set xj hat of t to be uh, either it's going to be the actual reward value divided by the probability that we picked action j. So this is if j is the action we actually picked, and 0 otherwise. So uh, notice that we're not actually using the rewards of actions that we didn't pick. Uh, we're just using the the action that we picked and we're zero for all the rest. So this is gonna I mean this is gonna look like some vector which is gonna be like zero. So this is this is x hat of t is gonna look like some vector which is pretty much zero everywhere except in some location it's gonna have x uh, j of t over p j of t like that. Okay fine. So uh, great. So now once we've set these x j hats we're going to take uh, w j plus 1, sorry, wj of t plus 1. So this is the weight for action j in the next round is going to be wj of t times e to the 
So this is gamma over k times uh, x j hat of t. Okay, fine. So uh, what this is doing is it's updating uh, the weights, but any action that we didn't pick, right? So this x j hat is going to be zero if we didn't pick the action j, and so e to the zero is going to be one, and the weight's not actually going to change. So the only weight that we're changing is the weight corresponding to the action that we actually took. Okay, fine. So uh, uh, the one weird thing about this uh, algorithm is the uh, weight estimates, right? So we have this. Uh, let me circle it in blue. So we have this definition here of uh, this xj hat, and we might be curious as to why we're actually doing it. So let me do this down here in blue. Uh, what's happening is we want uh, to compensate for the fact that the probability of choosing action j is really small, right? So if we have uh, a, a reward here, uh, but we have a small probability of getting it, then we want the estimated reward to be bigger, right? So so. I'll make this formal in a second, but we're going to call this the estimated reward. Estimated reward. Uh, and the reason that we call it the estimated reward is because if we take, uh, right, so this thing is a random variable, uh, and it depends on the previous history of actions. So if I have uh, some list of actions that I took in round one, in round two, all the way up to round, uh, say, little t, right? then this is a sequence of random choices that I made. And so I can look at the expectation of uh, xj hat of t with respect to uh, this sequence of actions. So i1, i2, it. Right? And we want this expectation to actually be equal to the actual payoff of uh, the, of the of the action in that round, but we might not know this payoff. So uh, so what we're doing is we say, okay, well this expectation, just using the definition of expectation, is going to be the sum over uh, the value of x j hat of t. So I'll just write x j hat of t times the probability that we pick action j. Right. So this is going to be the probability that we pick uh, action j. So uh, right, the probability that we pick action. I. Let me explain that a little bit more. Uh, so here, uh, this expectation is uh, the sum i goes from 1 to k of probability that we pick action i and then the value of the random variable when we pick action i, right? But this thing, right, we define it to be 0 all the times when we don't actually pick action j. So this is going to be uh, a sum of a bunch of zeros. Uh, times these probabilities, except in the actual i sub, so except in the jth term in the sum. So this is going to be x j hat of t times p j of t, and then this thing it's defined to be the actual value x j of t divided by the probability. So this is just going to be x j of t. Okay, fine. So this was just a little nice trick to make the expectations work, um, and we're going to use it sort of later in the proof. So now we can go ahead and we can state the main theorem. So let me do that in black again. Uh, so the theorem uh, is, uh, so for any choice of pretty much anything, right? So for any choice of, uh, so this is k greater than 0, uh, gamma in between 0 and 1, uh, for any choice of uh, assignment vectors, so assignment uh, so, so uh, in, for any choice of these two things and any assignment of rewards, uh, x of t, uh, and also, and for any uh, stopping time, so stopping time t greater than zero, uh, we have the following is true, right? So this is the gain. Of uh, of the best uh, action uh, from times one up to t minus the expected gain of exp three uh, is less than or equal to uh, so e minus one gamma g max plus k log k over gamma. 
Okay, so this is the theorem. And let me just explain these terms just a little bit. So remember, uh, this g max of t, this was uh, the sum of all of the payoffs of uh, action j, and then we take the maximum over j of these payoffs. So this is t goes from 1 to t. Right? This is the, if we look at the best possible action from times 1 to t, and we look at the sum of all the payoffs, that's what this is. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this expectation, right? this is the expected value of the sum of all of the xits. Right? So this is, uh, remember, it is the action that exp3 actually picks in round t. And so we're actually going to, so this thing is going to say, this is the sum of all the rewards of uh, our algorithm across all times. OK, fine. Um, so um, here, I forgot to put this t here. Okay, fine. So uh, we want to actually go ahead and prove this theorem, uh, and we're going to do it in uh, two parts. Right. So I'm going to split the video into two pieces because this proof is actually kind of long. It's not particularly hard, but it's very detailed. So uh, there's lots of different uh, quantities filling around, and we have to sort of fudge everything to make uh, the inequalities go in the direction we want. So let me start uh, down here uh, with the proof. Right. So uh, this is the proof. We're going to start by looking at, uh, okay, so let's let's define this quantity W sub T. So this is a capital W. Uh, this is going to be the sum of all of uh, the uh, weights in a given round. right? So W1 plus W capital K of T. So this is the sum of all the weights in any given round. Um, I'll try to make my capital W's more obviously different from my lowercase W's. Uh, and what we're going to be interested in the proof is we're going to try to find bounds on this quantity. So it's going to be the ratio of the weights from one round to the next. Okay, so this is the sum of the weights in round t plus one. This is the sum of the weights in round t. And we're interested in their ratio. Uh, so right away we can actually see that this is equal to some stuff. So uh, we'll write this as equal to this sum. Uh, I goes from one to k of, uh, so this is the little w i, so remember just because w t plus 1 is the sum of the weights in this round, in the round t plus 1, so I'm just re-expanding this sum again, and I'm going to divide by capital W of t. Okay, fine, so uh, now I can use the weight update rule on this term in the numerator, so this is the weight update rule, right, so this is going to be the sum i goes from 1 to k of, okay, so I'm going to write it as w i of t over capital W of T, and now this is the weight update part. I'm going to do e to the gamma over k times uh, x i hat of T. Fine, so this is the weight update step, uh, and I'm going to leave this alone for a second, and I'm going to look just at uh, this term right here. All right. So remember from, so let me do that over here in green. So remember from the algorithm, we had this definition of the PIs, right? So PI of T was this uh, 1 minus gamma times WI of T divided by the sum of the weights in that round. So I'll just write that again as capital WT plus uh, gamma over K, right? So what we're doing here is we're just going to solve for this term WI of T over capital W of T in terms of the PIs and the gammas, right? So uh, I'll just... I mean, so I've already done it, but so let me just skip all the algebra and write down what this is actually equal to. So this is the sum i goes from 1 to k of uh, pi of t minus gamma over k divided by 1 minus gamma. Right, so then I still have this e to the gamma over k xi hat of t sitting here. Uh, and now I'm going to look at this, uh, now I'm going to look at the exponential. So uh, we're going to use a simple fact from calculus, right, that e to the x is less than or equal to 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared, right? So this is just looking at the first three terms of the Taylor series for e to the x, uh, and since we're cutting off the remainder of the terms and everything is positive here, we get an inequality, right? So we can uh, do our first inequality uh, of the proof. So this is going to be less than or equal to the sum i goes from 1 to k of pi of t minus gamma over k over 1 minus gamma of, so I'm going to write this in big blocks, is going to be 1 plus gamma over k xi hat of t, right? So this thing here is the argument x uh, plus 1 half, 
So I'll write one half uh, gamma over k squared xi hat of t squared. Okay, fine. And so one other thing that we do is is we notice uh, that this one half is actually less than or equal to e minus two, and so we're going to replace it with e minus two. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're going to take logs in a minute, uh, and so we know ahead of time that we want e's to be involved. So this is just a little trick. Okay, fine. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and expand some things. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this sort of uh, a little bit quickly. So we're going to take this term here and we're going to expand it directly to the one. That's fine, right? So this is going to be equal to, uh, or, or rather, it will be less than or equal to, and we'll see why in a second. So it's going to be less than or equal to. So here's that the sum i goes from one to k of just pi of t minus gamma over k over one minus gamma, right? So that's the one term. Uh, and then for the other two, we're going to expand, we're, so we're gonna distribute these through, but in addition, we're going to get rid of the minus gamma over k, right? So the reason we can do this is because we're trying to get an upper bound, and if we delete something that we're subtracting, uh, so a positive number we're subtracting, then that can only make the whole expression bigger, right? So we can just get rid of this term and expand the rest of it, uh, and that will make it a little bit simpler. So uh, this is going to be uh, uh, right. So this is going to give us another sum. I goes from one to k of uh, so it's going to be pi of t xi hat of t over uh, one minus gamma times gamma over k. Fine. And then for the last one, uh, we're going to so I'll just I'll just factor out these constants ahead of time. So this is going to be e minus two uh, gamma over k squared over 1 minus gamma, so it looks like an r, I'll try to make that a gamma, uh, times the sum i goes from 1 to k of pi of t xi hat of t squared. Okay, fine, so uh, we've got this big ugly sum, um, and we're interested uh, in, in sort of coming up with bounds on the different terms separately. Okay, fine, so uh, uh, one thing we noticed, so let's work with this uh, first term here in red. Okay, so uh, we noticed that uh, like this sum breaks up, right? So this is 1 over 1 minus gamma, sum of pi of t minus gamma over k. i goes from 1 to k. And there are k terms in this sum, right? So we can pull this part out here. Uh, and multiply it by k, so then that's just going to cancel the k's and we'll get minus gamma, so this is minus gamma uh, over 1 minus gamma, right, and uh, uh, sorry, okay, hold on, let me erase this. So uh, what I should have written, uh, what I should have written is so this is 1 over 1 minus gamma times, so here we have uh, minus gamma plus this sum of the pi of t's i goes from 1 to k. Uh, and what's happening here, so so this thing here is all of the probabilities in a probability distribution added together, so this sum is going to be 1, and so here inside here we have 1 minus gamma, and on the outside we have 1 minus gamma, so this thing just cancels to 1. Okay, fine, so all of that work was just to show that this is 1. Okay, fine, so let's go ahead and do uh, this part in blue. Right. So uh, uh, one thing that we notice is that uh, okay, so pulling out the constants, right, this is going to be gamma over k uh, divided by 1 minus gamma, and then we have just the sum of the pi of t xi hat of t, i goes from 1 to k. Right? And what this is doing is exactly that expectation that we saw earlier, right? This is the expected value of xi hat of t, uh, and because uh, we, I mean, we already saw this earlier that all of these guys are 0 except for. Uh, the ith one. Oh shoot! Uh, so we should. Mm. No, no, this is correct. So, so what's happening here is this is uh, this is the expectation of x i hat of t, right? And this is going to be zero for all of the i's except the one that we happen to pick uh, in the current round, right? So this is actually going to be equal to x 
i sub t of t, right? So so this step here is equal to x i sub t of t, and this is just saying that, uh, right? So this is just uh, going to be so this thing is going to be zero for all of the terms except for the one that we picked, which was the i sub t term, and we're multiplying that by p i t, so that gets rid of the probability that's in the denominator of this thing, right? So this is just going to be uh, so gamma over k times one minus gamma x i sub t of t. Fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the third term. Uh, so here. Uh, this thing, so okay, the constants are going to say the same, and this green part, uh, we're going to use this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull out one factor of this. So I'll write it here, I'll cross this out, and I'll do xi hat of t. So we're just going to do one factor here, and we're going to note the same thing is going to happen here, right? This thing is going to become xi sub t of t times uh, uh, xi sub t hat of t. Right, so uh, so right, that's fine. We just we've done this already in blue, so we're just doing it again. Uh, but we notice that this value here is between zero and one, so inclusive. So with an if we want to find an upper bound, we can say that this product is less than or equal to just the x i t hat part. Right, and then we can we can go back and we can rewrite this as a sum over i go from one to k of x i hat of t. Okay, fine. So all we really did was get rid of one of the factors of x i hat and take p i t with us. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, write this down uh, in full. Right. So so we did a bunch of upper bounds. Uh, so this whole thing is going to be less than or equal to one plus gamma over k divided by one minus gamma times x i sub t of t plus. Uh, so this is going to be e minus two gamma over k squared divided by 1 minus gamma times this sum i goes from 1 to k of the xi hat of t. Okay, fine. So um, what I'm going to do right now is stop the video and continue the rest of the proof uh, in the next video. Uh, okay, so I'll see you there.